Hi. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Where are we? <laughs> I'm Elia. From the Northwest. Oh, there we go. We got it on there. Oh, nice. See I got all my paraphernalia. Oh, here. I don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Let's start with the the words that we use to describe what we do. So I think there's a lot of disclarity around what we do. And I think when we do it, it's very clear. But sometimes when we talk about it, it's less clear. Got it. Um, you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Um, so I tell people that I dance. I teach dance and I make dance. Um, and there's always this barrier to entry in terms of understanding what that, what that word means and what that word uh, conveys. And so for a long time, I, I stopped using it and I went away from it. I said, no, I'm going to call it movement. Or I'm going to call it um, being athletic. Or I'm going to call it uh, rhythmic locomotion. Or I don't know, all these other things that didn't go through what it was. They kind of circled around. And um, recently, I've just decided to own that word and define that word for how I see it. Mm. And, and that word for how I see it is uh, something that is, is as old as we are, something that has a lineage in our bodies of, mm. of health and a lineage in our bodies of collectivism and um, biology and anthropology and things. It's more than just physical it's more than just fitness it's more than just those elements of dance that i love being physical and, and exploring the different movement ranges but it's also like you know there's a there's a, a spiritual aspect of music and other people and um and feeling yourself feeling fully bodied embodied um, and uh and so the different techniques for me go through dance in terms of um martial arts, um, body work, and different dance technique traditions, and qigong, and yoga, and uh, somatic experience. All these things can be through the lens of dance. And then on the other side is a more full version of you. Mm. So that's, that's kind of the definition I'm playing with is use the different elements and redefine dance as opposed to letting people say, oh, so you think you can dance. And, and, <laughs> like the show. Oh, we stuck with that exactly. Got so, it. Nice. That's that's the that's why I wanted to do this workshop. I think it uh, to me the the work that I've done um, outside of the normal realms of quote unquote dance has given more to my dance than anything else. The work I've done in some Alexander technique and in Tholen Christ and in um, Qigong. These things have infused my dance as much, if not more, than the more traditional forms of dance. So. Cool. That's nice. That's nice. And you? The yeah. Feldenkrais? So, Feldenkrais. Feldenkrais. That's how you say it. Rhymes with paradise. There you go. Yeah. Um, well, often people don't know exactly what Feldenkrais is. For a quick recap, it was a person. He was a person. He's dead now. His name is Moshe. But for me, teaching Feldenkrais... It's about returning back to that movement diversity that our bodies, I mean, it's so similar to what you say, how our bodies are meant to move, how they are encoded genetically to know how to move with all the, the twists and turns and angles of our skeleton. But most importantly, kind of how our bodies relate to the ground and to the environment and the theme that we're choosing, right, get down and get back up again, there's, there's this, what I find when I teach my classes here in Vancouver, in this studio that I'm in, is that people are afraid to get down onto the floor. Or if they do, they, they're not comfortable in bending and there's this inefficiency and this heaviness. And, and then to get back up, it's just as cumbersome. And, um, 
every time I teach, we go back to that key lesson, that key movement. And I think it's no coincidence that there's research now that shows that being able to do that easily and well without support from a chair or someone else helping you up will actually determine how well you live and it'll actually determine um, when you die. So I think it's, you know, again, pardon? And how happy you are. And how happy you are and how easy things are. And, you know, so for me, Feldenkrais, it isn't Feldenkrais. He was a person. He's no longer around. But he, he gave um, the world and my teachers and you, because you've done the work, this way of seeing movement through a different lens, mainly the lens of sensation, so how we sense our movements, how movement can be more efficient, more graceful. And, I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't want that? And yes. it's that's why I'm super stoked to do this with you, um, because it'll just bring in all these elements, so many elements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. it's it's. Um, I've been thinking in the last few months when I when I teach, uh, I've been looking at dance and specifically the the pedagogy of how to share movement and and dance with other people more as a as a nervous system exercise and less as a skeletal exercise mm-hmm. and that's, and what i mean by that is like so everyone tells me oh i can't take a class i don't have any rhythm <laughs> and uh or oh I'm, I'm, my body's so tight here here and here and and what i find is that it's not that it's just the soft tissue or the muscle. Yeah, that might be tight, but that's not what's limiting. What's limiting is the diversity of movement pathways, mm-hmm. and that that is what's limited. When you open that up, when you learn a different way of getting up from the ground, and then a different way, and then maybe a different way, and then maybe a different way, and a different way, and a different way, your whole nervous system has expanded, and yeah. all your neural pathways yeah. have, have grown and widened. And then all of a sudden you have these, it's like a menu of options of how to move. And so you don't exhaust one of them, or you don't overplay, mm-hmm. or over overuse any mm-hmm. one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so when they say, "Oh, I don't have rhythm," I go, "No, you definitely have rhythm." And you know, you you do some rhythm in your hands, and people match that in one second. Mm-hmm. And then you ask them to put it in their feet, and it's a little harder. And I and I tell them, "You have your rhythm's not the problem. You don't have a problem, eh?" But <laughs> exactly. B is, it's just about learning a new movement pattern, learning that rhythm in your feet, and then learning that rhythm on, you know, as you move through space. And, uh, and so getting them to rethink about their body as, as like, A, a problem. It's like, oh, I have all these problems. No, oh, you have problems with those on them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How you, how you learn new ways of moving. And I think that's what you said is, is mm-hmm. uh, sensory experience. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a relearning ways that babies learn how to move. And they learn how to move by every day they try something new. Yeah. And it's like, that to me is the mm-hmm. one point of this workshop that I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to is showing people a hundred different ways mm-hmm. that they can move around, up and down, up, down, around, 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 up, down. And it's like, what that does for the for your, your proprioception of the space around you and um, and yeah. and your enjoyment of that space around you. Because once you have more options, it's like wow. Mm-hmm. Then then the world it opens up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where I'm at now. And, and I know that that understanding has come from the work that that we talk about, that we share, uh, that I've done with you, that I've done also with um, in my qigong practice. Is this understanding of, of the body is a as a layered system, yeah, need all of them, yeah, working together. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, science and soul. This idea of these things playing together is so cool. It's so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And what what you say too about all the different options and variety. What is super important for me when I teach folks when they get a little deeper into the work that they do with me is how that it's all it's improving the movement and it's enhancing the movement and refining it. But it's also doing the same to your thinking, right? Mm-hmm. People don't make that connection. And I think 
this is another thing I really want to bring forth, and I bring forth in all my classes, but the moment you add in another pathway of movement, you're not just improving the movement, you're improving the quality of how you think about movement, about yourself. It makes concentrating easier, it makes problem solving easier, because just like you said, babies, before they can talk, their experience and their learning is via their movement. And just like you said, people come in with sore muscles and joints, and this is such a common thing with Feldenkrais, is teaching that it, it isn't the joint or the muscle that's the problem. <laughs> it's not been bad, and that's not, and that's not why it's tight. It's tight and sore because the pathways are faulty. That's where the problem is. And so there's this need to restructure and kind of... <laughs> it's not a word, but refunctionalize how things flow in the system. And the other thing, too, is having the curiosity. Mm -hmm. The curiosity and the desire, this is my big thing, to follow the impulse. And we've really killed our instincts, yeah? Like mm -hmm. there's this shyness, this uncertainty, this, oh, I don't know if I'm doing it right. right? There's a lot of that self-talk. And if you let that stuff just sort of sit aside or melt away, the body starts to speak because it knows how. So, yeah. so I'm super stoked for September, September 20th to 22nd in Vancouver. What you said that just made me think there's a, uh, um, I mean, it, this is using this, this seed idea and talking about a lot of things, but when people arrive at a place that they're dissatisfied with, often they look at how they got there as a way to solve it. And there's a beautiful quote I heard from Einstein. He said, you can't solve a problem with the same approach that caused it. Mm. <laughs> like, it's mm -hmm. more that's what he said. And I think that's the same example of this is you have joint pain. The goal is not to unjoint pain. The goal needs to be to go back and recalibrate mm -hmm. the system that can alleviate joint pain. You know, it's like, yeah. if the knee hurts, don't go to the knee. Yeah. It's somewhere that went into the knee or out of the knee. And, um, and this, this understanding of, of, of kids, I think, is so, is so cool because um, I remember my sister telling me, my little nephew, she said, kids will play with a toy every day until there's nothing left to learn mm -hmm. and when there's nothing left to learn from that toy they find a new toy mm -hmm. there's nothing left to learn from that book they, they find a new book or whatever yeah. and i think the same thing can be true in movement it's like we make the mistake of of just repeating the same movements all the time all the time all the time there's nothing left to learn from that mm -hmm. so do something find a new movement mm -hmm. and then exhaust that. That's the other thing we don't do is you don't exhaust that fully. So it's like no. we go into a movement, we take 10% of it and then just repeat that 10%. Yeah. It's yeah. like go into one, find all the possibilities, yeah. let it go find a new one. And, and you know, my, my little nephew is not going to repeat. He learns how to roll the one side. He's not going to keep doing that. He's going to try the other side, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, I think we can, uh, to me, uh, this workshop is about about how to do that in a, from a lot of different angles, you know? It's like from a lot of different approaches, from, yeah. from a, a sensory one, from a rhythmic one, from an individual one, from going into the body to going out of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, really giving ourselves the, the freedom and enjoyment to, to rediscover things that... Um, not that we lost, I don't think we ever lose anything, but that we... And we haven't prioritized them. Yeah. They've been on the shelf for a few years or a few decades. Yeah. A lot of decades. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. I like that quote. Um, my favorite one, maybe we'll end on this, um, is uh, from Stuart Brand. He was an environmentalist, whole earth discipline. But um, he says, uh, function melts form. Function melts form. So our common way of trying to 
fix our body problems is to change the form, right? Get the tissue worked out, get the bones cracked back into place, get your posture in a better form, right? How's that feel? Yeah. Um, but back to the babies, they learn their, they form the curves in their spine and they get the joints in their pelvis curved properly because of the movement they do. They're not, they're not thinking of the muscles to contract. You know, they're not trying to tighten the glute meat or, or strengthen the, the abs or any of that. They're just doing what they need to do to get from point A to point B in a graceful way or the end result being graceful. And it doesn't work that way. It, isn't, it doesn't go from, from uh, form to function. So by changing this function and improving it and refining it with all these different ways of moving in different orientations through space, you're, you're not only giving more adaptability in that word diversity to the movement, but you're going to improve muscle aches and pains and improve the way the joints work. And, and so that function really does melt the form. I like that. It's, it's very it's, nice. It's a good one. So, and that's from the architectural world, from buildings. Mm -hmm. So, well, What I like is that I, I know the, the quote, I've heard, um, form follows function. Uh -huh. But I like melt because it implies this heat. Yeah, this, yeah energy. Visceral energy change that, that transforms it. You know, mm -hmm. that's very... I, I like that a lot. That's it's good. good. Cool. Well, I'm excited to finally work with you. Ditto. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So um, if you're, I guess, for those of you watching this, hello. Um, there's some information down below. Hopefully I'll link the uh, um, link to the course, a fun, funky video that we've uh, created to demonstrate a bit of these themes. Um, Elia, you'll be doing dance, your dance. version of dance. dance. Yeah, and I'll be doing my version of Feldenkrais. Yeah. So, see you then. I, I'm excited for this workshop on a selfish level because <laughs> I'm going to learn a lot. And oh. favorite workshops are the ones that I walk out and I learn more than all the mm -hmm. students. So, yeah. no. um, ditto. That's the best uh, selling point I can make to, to anyone out there who knows me. It doesn't know me. It's calm because it's something that I, I value enough to to want to be there, you know, on, on a on a curiosity level, yeah. on a, a teaching I, level. So I'm gonna second that. Thank you, Irene. Yeah. September twentieth. Have a great August. You. And all of you. Bye. Love ya. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you.